Hey guys, in this video we'll be going through neutralization. I'm going to go through the definition as well as the method of neutralization by titration. If you're looking for calculation, I've done a separate video. The video link is here. So stay tuned. First, let's go through the definition of neutralization. Neutralization is a chemical reaction in which an acid reacts with the base to form salt and water only. No other product should be formed. In this case, we're going to look at acid and alkali. Remember that alkali is just a soluble base. Let's look at this example. We have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali. It produces sodium chloride, which is salt and water only. If we look at the reactants here, we have one acid and one base but the products salt and water are neutral so we start with an acidic and basic substance and we end with neutral substances therefore it is called neutralization another example nitric acid reacts with potassium hydroxide to form potassium nitrate which is a salt and water only let's look at the ionic equation of neutralization an ionic equation shows the ions that are involved in the reaction. We have two types of ionic equations. We start with the full ionic equation. The full ionic equation is written with the ions in aqueous solution written separately as free ions. For example, we have hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution. This means this hydrochloric acid is dissolved in water. And when it's dissolved in water, the cation and the anion exist separately they dissociate and exist as free ions in solution so hcl will exist as h plus ions and chloride ions and then we have sodium hydroxide which is also in aqueous solution so the same story happens here we have sodium ions in aqueous solution and hydroxide ions in aqueous solution these are the reactants then when we look at the products again sodium chloride is aqueous therefore we have sodium ion and chloride ion in aqueous solution but water is not in aqueous solution water is a liquid it exists as water molecules so we whatever is not in aqueous solution we retain the formula exactly so this is h2o in the liquid form this is the full ionic equation it shows all the ions in the equation but we have the net ionic equation and when we look at this equation you will notice that not all ions have reacted some ions are just watching they are exactly the same at the beginning of the reaction and at the end of the reaction and these are known as spectator ions they are not involved in the reaction so when we look at this equation we can see that h plus ions have become part of the water molecule at the end you don't see any more h plus ions here so h plus ions are not spectator ions but if you look at chloride ions before the reaction they existed as chloride ions after the reaction, they are still in the form of chloride ions. So this is an example of a spectator ion. So we get rid of the spectator ion. Next, we have sodium. Sodium also exists exactly the same before and after. Both is ion in aqueous solution. And therefore, sodium is also a spectator ion. It didn't change. It didn't take part in the reaction. So we remove it. And if you look at hydroxide ion, hydroxide ion, we don't see any hydroxide ion in the products. That's because hydroxide ion has reacted with hydrogen ion to form a water molecule. So this is when we get the net ionic equation. Once we remove the spectator ions, whatever left is the net ionic equation. So we have one mole of hydrogen ion reacting with one mole of hydroxide ion to form one mole of water. So you will see it doesn't really matter what the acid or the alkali is. The ionic equation in neutralization is H plus ion plus hydroxide ion will form one molecule of water. Titration is a method to carry out neutralization. So neutralization is the reaction between acid and base. Titration is the experimental procedure to carry out this reaction. Titration can be used for several reasons. In this case, we are going to use titration to figure out the concentration of an alkali so we're going to use sodium hydroxide solution of unknown concentration 
we want to draw out a known volume of sodium hydroxide solution. When we want to draw out a volume of a substance accurately, we have to use a pipette. And before we use a pipette, of course we should rinse the pipette to get rid of any impurities that might be stuck to the wall of the pipette. And we don't rinse with water because when we rinse with distilled water, after rinsing there will still be some water droplets on the wall of the pipette. And when we draw in the alkali solution, the alkali solution is going to be diluted by the droplets of distilled water on the wall of the pipette. And therefore the concentration will not be the same. So instead of rinsing with distilled water, we rinse the pipette with the solution itself, the solution that we want to draw into the pipette. That way, even though there are droplets on the wall of the pipette, when we draw in the solution, it will not be diluted. In this experiment, we are going to use 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide solution. Therefore, we need to use a 25 cm cube pipette. Once we've taken in the solution into the pipette, we put it into a conical flask. This is a conical flask. Then we take the conical flask with the sodium hydroxide solution and place it on a retort stand. There's a white tile at the bottom to help us to see the color change clearly. In this method of titration, we are going to find the exact volume of acid that is needed to react completely with all the sodium hydroxide in the sodium hydroxide solution. And therefore, we need some sort of indicator that this reaction has completed, that all the sodium hydroxide molecules in this solution have reacted with the acid. So this is why we add a few drops of phenolphthalein. If you haven't seen my video on acid and base, the video links at the corner, I cover acid-base indicators there. So phenolphthalein is pink when the solution is alkali, and it is colorless when the solution is neutral and acidic. So we cannot use acid in the conical flask and titrate with alkali because phenolphthalein in acidic solution is colorless, in neutral is colorless as well. So there will not be a color change when all the reactants have reacted. Remember neutralization, we are starting with acidic and basic substance, but the products are neutral. So when it is neutral, Phenolphthalein will change color to colorless. Next, we have to add the acid. So we are going to add the acid from a burette. This is a burette. The scale starts from zero at the top to a hundred at the bottom normally. Because of the same reasons, first we have to rinse the burette with the nitric acid solution that we are going to use. And then we pour in the nitric acid solution into the burette. We fill it with the nitric acid solution. So here it doesn't matter how much you fill the burette because we are going to take the volume later. So you can fill up until almost the top. Once we've done that, we have to clamp the burette to the retort stand above the conical flask. So now we are ready for the reaction to take place. Before we let in any acid to react with the sodium hydroxide solution, we have to take the initial volume. And then we open the opening at the bottom of the burette and allow the acid to flow into the conical flask while this happens, we need to swirl in order to enable the acid and the alkali to mix properly so that the reaction can take place properly. And the first round is just to get an estimate. If we want to get an accurate volume, we have to add the solution, we have to add the acidic solution drop by drop. But if we add drop by drop from the very beginning, this titration is going to take a long time. So the first round is just to get an estimate of roughly how much acid is needed for the reaction to take place. So for example, let's say this is the first round, we call it the rough round. So we we'll let the acid react with the alkali until the solution becomes colorless. The moment the reaction mixture becomes colorless, we stop the acid from flowing into the conical flask and we read the final volume. So when we get the final volume, we can minus the initial volume and this will give us the rough volume, the estimated volume that is needed to react with this amount of sodium hydroxide. Once we have the estimate from this rough round, then we can use it for the next round where we get the accurate volume of acid that is needed. So here how we do it, we have to repeat the process. So in the conical flask, we have to discard the mixture here. And now we have to take a fresh batch of sodium hydroxide solution, exact same volume as just now, 25 cm cube. Then we add the phenolphthalein, a few drops of phenolphthalein as the indicator for the reaction. Now we take the new initial volume of the burette. This initial volume is actually 
the final reading from earlier because we didn't do anything to the burette. The volume of acid in the burette is still enough to continue for a few more rounds of titration. So we don't have to keep replacing the acid. So now with this initial volume, we repeat the whole titration process. But this time, we allow the acid to flow in, not until the color changes, but until about 5 cm cube before the estimate volume that we got earlier. So let's say the rough volume that we got is 20 cm cube. For this first titration, we will only allow the acid to flow in quickly into the conical flask until about 15 cm cube. Remember all the while we have to be swirling. So once it reaches 15 cm cube, then we will not allow the acid to flow in fast anymore. Then we will start to add the acid drop by drop. So this will allow us to control it and stop the reaction exactly when the color changes. So when the phenolphthalein changes from pink to colorless, then immediately we will stop the flow of acid into the conical flask. And this is known as the end point of the titration, when the color changes. Then we get the final reading of the burette, Vf. This is for the first accurate titration. Now we have gotten the first volume that is needed to react with the sodium hydroxide solution accurately. And to increase our accuracy even more, we have to repeat the titration another two times. So when we repeat, we will get altogether three accurate values. And we will take the average of these three values. I will discuss this in further detail on my video regarding calculation. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do support me by just hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.